I want to show some quick options for creating the context for the site. So the line work that you've got in this this project, school project, site begin. If I go to analyze tab and I look at the uh, the main model, that's the level that I do these model lines on. You can, if I picked on one of them, you can see here it says main model. So I'm about to create the surrounding context for the the building using some uh, options. Um, I'm going to say model, create a mass. So this is me creating a mass form inside a project. And what this means is that I can't take it out of the project. I can't export a mass family. Um, that was my reason for beginning the activities in the school as separate mass families. But in this particular context, it's something specific to the project. So I feel pretty comfortable about saying uh, I'm going, these options that I'm going to use uh, will are, are specific to the project. I'm drawing on level one. I can choose to turn on or off the ability to create uh, surfaces from the line work, the closed line work that I'm about to draw. Um, so I want I keep watching these as I draft. And what I'm going to start with is drawing um, a rectangle over the model lines that were there before. So if I escape out of that and now I pick that those lines that I drew, I go up to create form, solid form. And what it does automatically is create an extrusion for me. And if I pick on that top surface, you'll see that I can actually edit the... the t I'll go a bit closer so you can see this. If I click on the top surface, I can edit that temporary dimension and give it a actual height. So let's make that 80, 80 feet. And I'm going to say finish the mass model. So I'm going to make another one now. And the reason for doing this one is to show you that if you don't give enough line work to imply what the finished form is going to be, then the system will try and help you. Vasari will try and help you or mass modeling in Revit will try and help you. So for example, if I go model, create a mass form, this time I'm going to say pick lines, which means that I can grab the line work that I've already got here and it will create the sketch on top of it. This is extremely useful if, say, you import a DWG file or a DGN file and you're actually creating mass models from existing CAD files. Um, I've now been able to select the line work and I can go and say create a form, but in this particular case, um, it's not very clear that I mean to create a cylinder or that I mean to create a sphere. So here what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose the option that says create a sphere. I'm then going to pick on the sphere because the sphere has properties. And I'm going to say the start angle should be at 180 degrees because what I actually want is it should start at 180 and it should finish at 360 in order that I get a globe, uh, not, a, not a sphere, but a dome, I should say. So there's the dome of my mass object. I'm going to say finish that mass object. The next one, I'm going to go model, create a mass, and I'm going to use pick lines again. I always keep an eye on this because it changes the, as you draft. I'm going to pick on the spline that I had drawn here, this model line reference, and it draws a spline on top of it. I then need to tell it, this is where I'm going to use this for a sweep, but I need to have something to sweep along the line. So what I do is I, I pick on the option that says point and I place that on the, the spline itself because the, a point has a, I'm going to roll in so you can see this a bit better. A point has a flat plane that you can draft on. So if I pick that point, I'll be able to draw something. I'm going to draw a rectangle that begins at the, uh, the center of that point. And I'm just going to eyeball this, but let's say it was, uh, Let's say it was 40 feet uh, wide, so I'll say 40. And then I'm double clicking on the top edge there, and let's say make it 50 high, so enter that. So now if I zoom out a little bit, what I've got is, uh, it, and I'll turn it a bit so you see it in 3D, but what I've got is a, a path and a close profile to sweep along it. If I pick on the path and I hold the control key and pick the closed shape, I've got those two selected. Now I can say create me a form and it would know that it wants to create a sweep along that form and let me say finish that. If I zoom down on the, the geometry at the front of the site here, what I'm going to do is say create a mass form. I'm going to use the uh, draw line. 
And I'm drawing this line on top of the model object there. I'm drawing it from the near end to the far end. And if you point your thumb along that line, your right your, on your right hand, the fingers come up and over. And that up and over direction is the direction that they would be for any revolved object that uses this line as its axis. So if I continue this by saying pick the lines and I'm going to tab on the existing model lines that are there so they're all selected then click to select them and it created the close shape on top of it. I'm now going to hold the control key to select both the oops sorry to, to select both the uh, the model geometry and the, the line that I do as the axis and then I'm going to go and say create me a solid form and that's enough to let it know that it's going to sweep that around. Now because my I know my sketch for the closed shape is lying at angle zero if I select the solid itself I, and I change the end angle to 180 instead of 360 then what I'm doing is creating a revolved shape that looks like this in my in my model. Not quite sure that I got that correct. Let me uh, let me backtrack on this rather than than. Uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna say cancel. Okay, that'll get rid of the last one I was creating. So thinking here, I just want to be sure that I didn't. If I if I didn't have a closed shape, then what I've got is a surface that was wrapped around, and I'm trying to show you how to create solid forms. So if I uh, if I tell it again from the beginning, create a mass, and then I say I'm going to create that from the geometry. Let me start by moving over the line work and then holding the tab and clicking. And I'll click one more time. Then here, I'm going to draw my line from near to far away, just as I did before. Okay, escape to get out. Now I'm using the control key to select both the closed shape and the, the line that's going to be my axis. And then I'm going to say, create me a solid form. That looks better. Uh, now remember that I can add, edit that form and say, go from 0 to 180. And apply, and that looks a lot better. That's what I wanted to create. So I'm going to say I'm finished with that. I've only got two more to create here, for my, or three more to create on my site. Let me say that I say that I want to uh, create a mass. I'll use the select lines, and I'll pick on this ellipse, and I'll say create me a form, solid form. Um, and I'm going to edit the temporary dimension and make that uh, 80 as well. And then the last one on here, I'm going to show a different technique. Let me say finish. I'm going to do a blend where what I want to do is I say create me a mass form. I'm going to draw a rectangle that will be my close shape. I'm then going to select on that rectangle and I'm saying copy it to the clipboard and paste it two selected levels, levels um, 3 and 5. So these are set in my project as being, I think, at 12 foot intervals. But I've now got three sketches, one on top of the other. What I want to do is I want to just show that if I, uh, if I make a change in this, suppose I double click on that central sketch that I've got and I'm going to delete it and I'm going to put in an arc that runs from um, that runs from this is on that was on level three, so I'm going to place my arc so it runs from there to there. I'll just give it a bit of a curve so you can see it. So the point the point of these multiple sketches is that if I if I use the control key to select those closed shapes, and I then go and say create me a form, I'm getting a a form that is actually curved on this this edge. So I'll say finish that. I've only got one more to do and that's a simple one but it's uh, to illustrate that the, uh, the, the, the product can create mass forms but they don't have to be mass forms that have volume. So if I say create mass 
I'm going to click on the rectangle. I want to make sure this says level 1, but this time I'm going to check on the option that says make a surface. And I'm going to start by putting one end of the rectangle there and the other end over there. Now I'm going to get a warning message that seems a little scary. Uh, because when I've done this, it comes back and says to me, the mask that you just created uh, only contains mesh or the surface can't be used to compute mass floors, volume, and surface areas. That's fine. That's not what I'm planning on using it for. Why I put it in there is because when I use solar radiation, I can only see the end results on top of a mass form. So I'm creating the surface in order that I can see the solar radiation on the surface of my site.